got a, a Henry got a hold of a brand new nine millimeter Beretta, and I got had a, had one. I got from a guy of what what ten dollars they could give him for it, and uh, ammunition. It was good. What did you use? I used shot it a lot of times. Just, just fooled with it, and uh, when Henry had we had to have eighty five points to come home when the war was over. That's right, eighty five. Yeah. We had 81. <laughs> a lot of outfit troops replaced come in, you know. He was replaced to somebody. He came in. He'd been in an army longer. He had 85. They flew him home. Well, I gave him my bread. I tell him, bread, I got his brand new one and $10. <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> it's registered with the Michigan State Police. Right. So let me ask you. So you had <clears throat> When the war in Italy was over, you had 81 points? 81 points. So that means you couldn't come home. So what did you do next? Then uh, they took our outfit. We went back down to Florence, Italy. We put us in a park along the river. And we were close to the city itself. And of course, there's these, the Pont of Vecchia, they call them, those over the river, all shops, the silver shops. We, we visited those. We, Went to operas at the, to went to British theaters and things in the city. We didn't have no duty. One fella that from Detroit and myself, she was in the same outfit. It was the only two of us. We were transferred to the 15th Field Hospital. We had to stay the rest of the time until we got our 85 boys. Now, did you uh, did you cook at the hospital? I cooked. At the hospital? Yeah, we had the German prisoners. They did cook. We, we all supervised them. Let me ask you, because you mentioned the German prisoners. Tell us more about what it was like to interact with the German prisoners. It was easy. They were just like us. They were no different than us. They had to go to war because they were drafted like we were. We had to go to war because we were drafted. We got along good. They did their job and everything. <laughs> we, we, so we there moved. were no ill feelings? No. Yeah, one time I'll tell you about that, the, the last time. <laughs> anyway, they did all that there. So I was going, we were set up in the field. I was shipped to this field hospital and they were set up in the field. And uh, I supervised the, the German prisoners. I met a family across the street. They had a couple girls. I got acquainted with this one girl. Uh, real nice. Uh, good, I'm good. I was every time I went with the girl, I was chaperoned. Right. But of course, there was a family in there. Right. So two of us guys got acquainted with those girls. And we we go over there all the time. Well, did we they got, speak English? No, well, I can speak Italian enough to get along. Right. And. Uh, if you hold hands with me, you know you can tell. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got trans. We sent our outfit. Was this was at Modena? Yeah. And I had a girlfriend uh, back in Chad. After the war was over, and we moved back down to Golden Florence, we went through Antemuchen. No, I'm sorry. I take that back. Boy, oh boy. Can't even think of the name of the town. That's all right. It's uh, it'll come to me. And uh, I met a girl there, and, and of course her mother wouldn't let her go out with me unless we were chaperoned. Mm -hmm. So it was a good little town. So. So now you're at the Salsa Majoria. Yeah, you got it. Salsa Majoria. Well, we went back to Modena again, and when they got in that field hospital. After you know, I had been in Modena and we moved, and then I went back there with the 15th Field Hospital. Then we went up to Lake Guardia. We, we took over a hospital, I tell you, an American hospital already set up. They took our equipment and we took over to their kind of setup. We had it made then. We were on the lake, nice sandy shore, beautiful lake. We, we go swimming. Was this a, now? This would have been in 
late 40, mid 45, 1945? Yeah, it was in more than 45. So the war is really time. winding down and... It, yeah, well, five days later, the, the Germans surrendered in, in uh, Europe. And so do you remember hearing that news? Sure. What, what, what was that like? Well, the war was over. Because I knew I had enough points, I didn't have to worry about being shipped to Japan. Oh, yeah. The war was still going on of in course, Japan. Of right. So I was in that late uh, uh, Guardia. So did some of your friends get shipped to Japan? No. No, okay. Unless it's some replacement that come in and didn't have any points at all, you know. Right. Because they replaced some of our men. Come in. Right. So, so you learned that the war is over, and now you're just waiting for the news when you're going to go home. Over. So we, we moved from there, we went to, took over the Italian hospital. And it was like a, like a courtyard with little buildings all around the courtyard. Single little buildings where patients were, doctors, offices, the kitchen and stuff. We had, a, we had one of the cooks was, was German. His family descended. He, he was a... Uh, uh, Spoke German real good. One of his bunch of German prisoners, <laughs> older men there, and he was a young guy, uh, 18, 19 years old. Now wait a minute, now, I, I'm confused. Was he a German prisoner of war no, or he was an American? He was a German prisoner of war. German prisoner of war, okay. And he, he was cocky, you know, he was showing off in front of these other older men. He was thrilled and yeah, 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 about that guy, you know, that cook. <laughs> One of the men's. Mitz <laughs> spoke to him in German. Boy, did that ever catch hell. Because <laughs> he didn't think anybody could understand no, him? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah the, 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 our cook, because he spoke German. He was, his family was right. quite German. But he understood what that kid was saying. <laughs> <laughs> and that, 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 those cooks that cooked there, the Germans, they made the best looking roast chicken I ever saw in my life. Most beautiful brown and crispy, and they could really cook. That sounds great. So they come time to uh, leave there. That was way up in northern Udina, Udina they call it, Udina, uh, almost as far north as you go, up above Milano. Yeah, and yeah. still in Italy. Still in Italy, right? Oh yeah, still in Italy. I got on a plane, a two-seat, two-engine plane, on a runway of dirt behind the buildings. And when I got on a plane, there wasn't a seat left. Was uh, this to come home? To, to fly back down to Naples. Right. And I sat, I sat on my barracks bag in the center aisle. And we flew down, we flew across the Adriatic Sea, to see part of it. And when we got down to Naples, the pilot took us over Mount Suvius. Nice. Yeah. And showed us, took us down in there, and we landed and went down in there. And, uh, hey, Eddie, let me ask you, had, had you been on a plane before that moment? Was that your first flight? That was my first flight. Were you nervous? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I was coming home. Yeah. Nothing made me nervous then. So we got down there, and that was uh, uh, November the 1st. We got our papers ready, and that's what this, some of that is. Why they sent me a discharge, I don't know, I got my original one. Oh, I didn't see this one, okay. And we got, I got on a, on a ship <laughs> there, and we, land, we went to North Africa, some place in North Africa, and uh, uh, took on ballast. Because this wasn't a big, very big ship. It was like a little bigger landing craft, <laughs> like a Liberty ship, a little, little one, you know. Yeah. And uh, my had a cot right, right at the tables in the dining room, and the food is slopping. I stayed up on deck. November the twenty second, nineteen forty five, I landed. The, the best sight I ever, the other one besides the 600 aeroplane, 
I got up on a Sunday morning and I laid up on deck in my great coat. Eating. We ran out of food and eating shortbread cookies. I spotted America. Where did you, what, did, what port did you come back into? Newport News, Virginia. Newport News, I know it well. And went to Camp Atterbury. Mm -hmm. That's where I discharged from. So that was one of the best sites, how huh? you saw America? Yeah, the best you... site I've seen in all my life, I think. That's amazing. So did, were you discharged right soon thereafter? Yeah, about, yeah about in two or three days. We, 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 when we landed, and they took us in trucks. People were waiting on the street, clapping for us. And uh, we landed, got into Camp Atterbury and went to a big auditorium. Officers got up and says, now, all you soldiers do not have to salute the officers. The officers have to salute you. Nice. She says, now, I want you to stay close by and don't go running off to the town or something. Stay close by because you're going to get your papers to go home. So we went to the PX and got hot dogs, we got ice cream, stuff we never had gotten before. And we got our, all our papers and everything. And uh, got on a, on a train. And instead of going directly to Michigan from Indiana, I thought, well, I'm going to go to Memphis. Because it was in between. <laughs> it was in a triangle light. No, I may cry, but uh, the reason I came here, while I was at uh, San Pietro, I got a letter from a girlfriend. I thought I was in love with her, and it was one of these John, dear John letters. Oh. She had gotten somebody else going to wait for me. That happened a lot. And, and that, that was the same time that uh, American planes were bombing and, sh and they fell falling short. I had to run and get in my foxhole. But they didn't hit us, they were a little further. Right. And so, uh, I, I room and boarded up, up in Michigan, the porter in Michigan at a uh, room and house. And the woman there had married an American soldier from Michigan. She lived in Salisbury, born in Salisbury, Tennessee. And, and uh, she married a soldier that he came to Memphis and met, and met her and fell in love with her, took her back to Michigan. And, then, and she, she ran the boarding house. And on the sewing machine was a picture of three girls. And so when I got this letter, I uh, probably was writing to this girl before, but I started writing to her. And then, you know, it was almost three years. Right. I wrote to her. So I knew at that time she's going to be the one. And she lived here in Memphis. She lived in Memphis. I got on a train and come to Memphis. Got out of off the train at Central, not Central Station, but the Union Station. Yep. Went to a barber shop. Never one. Never in my life had my fingernails fixed. Had them clipped and clear polish put on them. <laughs> you needed to look good. <laughs> <laughs> I got on a taxi. It was Seven o'clock in the morning. I had a share with two other guys. And I was the last one to get out and I went to 334 McLean Avenue and got out of, out of the taxi and said, wait for me. I went up and knocked on the door. Did she car. know you were coming? No. She didn't know you well, were she coming? Knew, yeah, she knew I was going to get going to be out of the war. But she didn't know you were going to knock no. on her door that day. So she worked for a trucking company. She was a rate clerk. She was at work already. It was 7 o'clock in the morning. Her sister worked there also, but her sister was still home. Well, our sister got ready for work. We got on a on a bus. On a, they lived on a corner of Clean and Fourth Street. Got on a bus, and I never forget. Uh, hang on, there were no seats. Hung on the pole. I had my hide. Tried to hide my finger. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't macho. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we got to the to the off the bus to the uh, trucking company. And then their office where she worked was upstairs. I was downstairs. Now her sister run upstairs and says, Eddie's here. Had you met her face to face before? No, you never met her never face to face. Her. She come, uh, I can hear her coming down them, down them steps. You're going to make me cry too, but good, yeah. good, good story. That's the first time I met her. Yeah.
That's awesome. And her aunt went down here to introduce us, but she was at Salisbury. So her, the boss let her off. Right. We got on a bus and went back to her house. We stayed a day or two. And uh, we got train tickets at Central Station. We went to Port Huron, Michigan. My mother and my father. My mother, my father ran off and left my mother and my brother and sister when he was, when I was 15. And uh, uh, she was there because my uncle, she was taking care of my grandfather because my grandmother died. She was taking care of my uncle, her brother, younger brother, and grandpa. Now, your mom, this is your talking my about mom. Your mom lived. Right. It was down by Detroit, down in Rochester. Right. And uh, my dad lived, still lived in Port Huron. He came, and his sister and her husband came to the train station to meet us. So and we got there. So you took her uh, up to Michigan? I took her up to Michigan I with her that aunt. Part. She went with her aunt. I went with my aunt. What, what's her name? Juanita. Juanita. She's the one. Her aunt named her Cecil Juanita after her dad. Juanita, okay. Cecil Juanita Newton. Okay, I gotta ask, did you get married to her? Yes, uh, I got engaged to her. She went back to Michigan, like I said. Right. I, well, I already had an engagement ring. I got, I went and got a new wedding Now, how ring. long were you married? Are you still married? 67 years. Really? She died uh, November the, um, May the 8th, 2013. Well, I'm so sorry for your loss. Yeah. Yeah. Still, Master. I bet you do. I bet you do. Well, it was so wonderful that you met her and you had 60 some odd years uh, yeah, together. Yeah, I, 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 I knew she was going to be the one. And you were right. I could tell by, you know, by writing in the letters and stuff. That's awesome. Oh. That's a great story. That's a great story. So, um, we're running short on time so let me ask you so what did you do after you got out for a career what what did you do I went back to I went back to Port Huron and she came up I got engaged while she's up there and sent her back down to Memphis I got a leave of absence from the factory in a week I come down here to, to Memphis I drove a little 35 Dodge because <laughs> I got tires for it and right. battery and stuff because right. my uncle kept it for me I drove down here to Memphis. I followed a Greyhound bus in from Brownsville into Memphis. When I, once I got to 4th Street, I knew where I was. I came to the house. We uh, we had a had a waiting waiting period. We went to West Memphis. It was only a three day waiting period. We went to I mean to Four City and uh, get our license. And the clerk over there says, I'll tell you who the judge is, and you go talk to the judge. And there be no waiting period. So we, that was, uh, that, what the hell did I get married? Oh, March 12th, <laughs> 1946. We went to the judge's house, and he, he knew, he, of course, I had a uniform. He said, right. you've been married before? No, because <laughs> we were both, I was 25, she was 23. And I uh, told him we wanted to get married, and, and he signed the papers. So on the way back, we stopped at the Methodist Church in West Memphis, met the preacher, and made arrangements to get married that night. We went back over to over her mother's house here in Memphis and uh, got her aunt. My aunt was a couple years younger than my wife. And uh, and her and uh, my her sis, younger sister's husband was my best man. We went back to Mar Man West Memphis, got married that night. That's awesome. That's that a great was. story. So I, um, of course we took I took her back, and her mother back to, with us back to Michigan. Her mother went to see visit with her sister, her aunt. You right. Know. Right. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So, that was a great story. So in our few moments that we have left, um, I am admiring your uniform jacket. And that's so awesome that you can still fit in it. That's great. And of the 28 guys, I've, shoot, I was the only one. I've lost, there's three things I've lost just lately. I left side hearing aid, I come out and I don't know where it went. And my, I've lost a lot of weight. I'm down to 105 pounds when I'm 133. 
and my my red ring slipped off my hand somewhere, and I can't find, I couldn't be able to find it. What ring? My Your wedding ring? ring. Oh my goodness! And uh, I had a I had a little emblem on here from World War One. My father gave me it was the 303rd Ninth Polar Bear Division. Right. And I had come on pin and lost it. I'm so sorry you lost your wedding ring. That yeah. must be hard. The thing I'm proud of is this right here. What now? Histor it says Eddie Spencer, historian in residence. Lausanne uh, College. Collegi I have my glasses on. Lausanne Collegiate School. Yes. And why are you proud of that? Because I, take, I, I, I go anytime I feel like it. I go over there to eat whatever I feel like it. I talk to the different classes about World War II. I wear my uniform. Uh, when I go into the dining room, all the little kids, they all stand up and clap. The whole big dining room. That's, that's great. That's quite an honor, because yes. that, that is, a, that is a, quite a school. That is indeed. So this is your handsome uh, slide but in That was when I was, whatever. I had to have that for, uh, to go to Washington. That was a handsome man. Indeed. So, and what is what is this one for? That's for being a good boy. <laughs> being a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good comment, Meryl. <laughs> uh, and that's awesome. And so, is this four years? This means four years. No. This. This is a. Everyone in represents six months overseas duty. Really. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and this is this is your rank. Yeah, that was first class. Private first. After, after I. The first day after I finished basic training, the captain was a wonderful man, Captain Kretschmeyer. He had been in World War I and had a crippled leg. He was a great guy. Him and me and five other guys got, got a rank. Nice. But I, I kept that rank because I chaplain's assistant didn't need no more or Colonel right, Orley right. or cook. Right. Henry was a sergeant. So Eddie, one thing, um, I think maybe the last thing we can talk about is you have said you get you have an opportunity to talk to a lot of kids and young people. Yeah. And so what is, what is one life lesson that you like to talk to them about that you have learned over such a long, interesting life, especially someone who was in battle for so many days I mean, what, what's something that you like to leave with the children? Well, I think that's kept me, my age going, doing this type of stuff. Indeed. A lot, a lot of soldiers will not talk about the war. My dad wouldn't talk very much about it. I know he, what he was like. I went to a reunion with him one time in Michigan. I know he was uh, 339th Polar Bear Division. I knew he was a 30 caliber machine gunner. I, f I went to uh, to the flea market over at uh, at uh, fairgrounds, and I found a couple of books. One on Nazis, and another one was some of World War One in there. I found a picture of him in there, in, in behind a machine gun. You and you recognize your dad right yeah. away? Yeah, and. Uh, I paid a couple dollars for it, but I can't. I got three books. I got two of them. I can't find that other one. Oh, the one he's in. I looked and looked and looked for it. Wow. Well, sir, it has been an amazing honor. Thank you so much. Ron or Don? Ron. Ron. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's been a, just a pleasure and an honor. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your service. And. Um, have a great day.